in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise God for you. And we know the Lord is here with us to bless, to heal, to renew your strength, to restore you in a mighty way. Now, I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo preaching the word of God uh, from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. Thank you for uh, following us in uh, Facebook and be with us in, as, a, as a comment to our YouTube. May the Lord bless you. Keep on even inviting others to this wonderful revelation of truth from God. The Lord will bless you. Today we want to, 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 to get the final part of the message, the permanent assurance by the Lord. Permanent assurance by the Lord who called us. God did not call us into a system of guesswork. God did not call us into a system of failure. God did not call us into a system of trial. God called us to the finished work of Christ on the cross. We are called to participate in the, 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 the finished work of the cross, declaring the resurrection of Christ, discovering him in a glorious way. And today, we want to see how we can have the permanent assurance by the Lord who called us. Now, one thing that gives us permanent assurance is when we settle on the authority of Christ. When a believer, you settle in a very clear way on the authority of Christ. One, if you read John chapter 19, verse 30, Christ said, let's read it together, that is John chapter 19, verse 30. The Bible says, it says, So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave us his spirit. It is finished. The work I came to do on the cross is accomplished. That's what Christ is saying. What was required by the justice of God is already provided. I have provided the sacrifice. I have met the demand. I have now met the demand. And I have stood on the gap. I have carried the griefs. I have borne all the pain on my body. I have done all what was required for men to be delivered for Satan to be overcome and silenced, for demons to be destroyed, I have done it. Power is available. My name is available. It is finished. On the side of the devil, all what was needed to destroy the works of Satan is available. All what was needed to meet the demands so that the accuser has no right over People who trust in the blood of Christ. It has been done. And therefore, it is finished. I say by the grace of God, every believer now should settle on it is finished. It's bad to have a mind that has no finished work of Christ. It is bad. It is really bad. It is it, can, it can, can bring failure. It can bring an opening to attack. If your mind, your thought life is still doubting, is still doubting the power of God. If your mind is still not clear about the resurrection of Christ. If your mind is not clear about the authority of the name of Christ. I want to declare to you, let your mind have a very clear way of the resurrection of Christ. It is finished. If you go to Matthew 28 verse 18, the Bible says clearly, that is Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, when Christ, Christ came to them and said something after resurrection, the Bible says something very important. And verse 18, uh-huh, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, 
All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Can you hear this clear testimony? Very authoritative, very clear, and now the come of clear victory. All authority, that is Christ saying after this erection, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. In heaven and on earth. I remember when Christ met John in the island of Patmos in Revelation 1.18. He said, I am the one who was dead and I am alive. I am Alpha and Omega. I am alive forevermore. And in my hands, I have the keys to Hades and death. And now, we need to have a very clear... You remember when Christ rose from the dead and he found the disciples and Christ wanted to commission them. The first statement that he made is about himself. It's about his status. It's about his resurrection. It's about who he is. It's the final authority in Christ. All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. It is final. I'm not, there's, there's no room for negotiation. There's no room that for failure. There's no room for disapproval. There's no room uh, remaining now so that, uh, that Christ can come later and he be tested again and he fight again. No way. It is finished. The war is finished. It is, it is, it is finished work for all times and all circumstances. It is finished work in every geographical area and any problem. It is finished in all status of life. That's how Christ is. And I want to say this, friends, by the grace of God. Time has come that all men and women of God should know the starting point of the ministry. The starting point of the ministry is a clear understanding and reception of the finished work of Christ and understanding Jesus in his absolute authority in a very clear way. That's very important. One of the, one of the permanent assurance by the Lord. One of the permanent assurance by the Lord is his victory in the resurrection. It is finished. I said to you, friends, whenever I face demons, whenever you, you face satanists, one of the things that they need to, re to read in your mind is a clear highway of God's power. It's a clear way of God's will. That whenever I say by the authority of Christ, I rebuke a demon, a demon can read my mind and notice this man is so clear about the finished work of the cross. Whenever somebody raises against me, my God, the Holy Ghost anoints the message in my heart that it is finished and the Lord I believe in, all authority in heaven and on earth, is given to him, and that is an absolute final truth that has no room of weakness, no room for negotiation. Somebody sang and said, I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, I think verse, let's see that, that scripture. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that's very important for any servant of God. It says, it says, mm -hmm. the Bible says something very important. Very important. That when Paul was giving his testimony, that is, that is 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The power that works 
in the saints. You know, when Paul explains the extent, the, the kind of power that works in us, if you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says, verse 20, uh -huh, or verse 18, and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what are the riches of his glory in, in his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the work of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly, power, heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and not only and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come hallelujah oh my god the only thing we can call it a prerequisite something that should come something that should be the major component of a man or a woman of God at whatever stage or age or circumstance or status you are in is a clear permanent assurance from the Lord about the finished work of the cross. Yes, John 18, 30, it is finished. Or Matthew 28, verse 18, or authority in heaven is given to Christ. Heaven on earth. Pray until this becomes so clear and it is start working in you. Yes, let any enemy of the gospel, at whatever level he is, let Satan slip from your mind a complete and clear understanding and a clear conviction, a clear way of authority. In me, there's no doubt about Christ and his resurrection. And it is so absolute that I'm not waiting for any man or any woman in this world to come and, 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 and be able to contend with the power that is in Christ. That's very, very important. Another thing that is as parent assurance from the Lord is our wealth. The wealth, the wealth of God's children. If you read from Ephesians, now, chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says, Blessed, Bible says, verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, we are complete in Christ. The Bible says we are complete in Christ. He who is above all principalities and powers. We are complete in Christ. He who is above all principalities and powers. The Bible also says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And therefore, one of the things that we should know is we are already blessed with every blessing that God has for us in heavenly places. What is heavenly places? Heavenly places is where Christ is seated at the right heart of God. The Bible says when Jesus rose from the dead, three things happened to every believer. One, we were quickened with him. Secondly, we were raised with him. And thirdly, we are seated with him. Hallelujah. We were quickened with him. Quickening means changing a dead thing into a living thing. We were transformed from death to life. We were not only changed from death to life. Jesus also changed our position. We are raised with Christ. 
we are not only raised with Christ, we are seated with Christ. Oh my God, you are quickened with Christ. We are raised with Christ and we are seated with Christ. And this is very important to know the wealth of our work. That we are already blessed. In God's presence, I'm already blessed. In his mind, I'm already blessed. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, Things that eye has not seen, things that ear has not heard, things that have never entered the heart of man, things that God has prepared for them that love him. I believe with all my heart, our wealth in Christ is determined, is very clear. The Bible talks about our wealth. If you read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14, it talks about the seal. We have the seal in whom, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I said to you, we have another permanent assurance. The Holy Spirit who came upon us has put us a rubber stamp, a seal. The Bible says, you received the seal of God by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the promise. Who is a guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? The Holy Spirit is a guarantee of our inheritance. He is saying this. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, it's like when you are purchasing a property. You pay a deposit. A sufficient deposit. Good deposit that proves that you are a serious buyer. And you are saying, this is the deposit that proves that even the remaining part will be paid. The Holy Ghost is a deposit. He has put a seal on us. He is telling us, receive the inheritance. Receive the riches of God. Receive the seal. Receive the promises. Receive the blessing. He has put a seal on us. And he is a guarantee that even the remaining part of inheritance will be paid. And therefore, we need to understand as per now, what is the wealth of our work in God. Another thing which is a component of our wealth, our work in God, Bible talks about exceeding. Just read verse 19. And what is exceeding greatness of his power to us? us? The exceeding greatness of his power to us. us. The Bible says it is the power that God used to raise Christ from the dead. The exceeding, the exceeding, greatness of his power towards us who believe. The power that the Father used to raise Christ from the dead. One of the things that, that is our wealth, our permanent assurance, already the power that our Father used to raise Christ from the dead is already working in you and in me. I say it is power that has already proved who God is. And that is a, a thing that we need to be very careful about. Another thing is enemies, enemy, whoever, however complicated he is, is at our feet. The Bible says, if you read verse 22, that after Jesus rose of the dead, he sat at the right hand of God the Father, far above all principalities and powers and dominion. And every name that is named in this life and in the life to come. That power is already in me. The power that is working in our lives. The power that Christ used to overcome, to overcome, to overcome death. Christ used to raise up the dead and overcome all the powers of hell. Now, one thing I've noticed, if you read from book Mark chapter 1 verse 24, a demon spoke and said, we know you, we know who you are. We know you have come to destroy us. We know your mission. Can you imagine 
I've seen this in my ministry as I serve the Lord. Oh my God, whenever I face witches, whenever I face demon-possessed people, I've always heard them say, we have nothing to do with you, Bishop. We know you have come to destroy us. You are servant of the Lord. I just destroy them and have people delivered. You know, one thing you notice is, if Christ is working in us with the power that he used to raise from the dead, that power, whenever you face a demon or a satanist, they talk about, we know you. They say, you are the servant of the Most High. You have come to destroy us. Demons already know the power in us is to destroy them. For Jesus was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. Another thing we need to know is this. I would like us to understand and to base, to know one of the permanent assurance given to me as a servant of God, given to you as a servant of God, is the permanent, permanent victory of Christ, is the permanent power of his resurrection, is the permanent establishment of the kingdom, whereby our work is to reach the power, our work is to declare the finished work of the cross, our work is to declare Christ and his resurrection, and we but all things in this world, things are there, things are to come, all recognize the finished work. I said to you, no demon will argue with the resurrection of Christ. No curse will argue with the resurrection of Christ. No witch in this world can challenge the name of Jesus and the power of his resurrection. I want to declare to you, there's power available power of the finished work. There is Savior available who has all authority in heaven and on earth. Receive now permanent assurance by our Lord because he has overcome death. Hear this friends, it is finished. Hear this young daughter. Christ is saying to you all authority is given to him in heaven and on earth. Go ye now with that authority. I rebuke Satan. I want to assist you overcome now. Whoever you are, you are subjected at the defeat. You have been subjected at the fear. You are living in a condition of oppression. Satan wants to make you depressed to finish your property, to destroy your family. I want to change that now. It's not you to suffer. It's not you to be destroyed. It is the devil who should suffer now and be destroyed. I want to turn the things upside down. I raise you from the possession of slavery. Receive the possession of dominion. I now, by the authority of anointing, raise you from tears to possession of joy and gladness. Now I command the joy of the Lord to be your strength. I declare to your mouth, that the word of God be your confession. I declare to your mind that the mind of God saturate your mind. There will be no room of fear or doubt. For the Lord is saying to you, permanent assurance for me is the resurrection of Christ at the finished work. I declare you are deliverers. Now be delivered. And every demon hovering aloud your mind and your family, I command it to get away now by the finished work of Christ. I declare peace that God gives. I declare protection, hedge of fire around you. I declare your healing now. I declare breakthrough. I command every station of the devil ahead of you, clear now, and you walk through. The Lord walked before you as devastating fire. Receive the complete work. See Jesus rising from the dead, removing every obstacle, raised with Christ. Nothing would hinder his resurrection. Just as Christ could not be hindered on the way from the grave, rise up from that grave of desperate life. Nothing will hinder. You are rising up 
by the power of his resurrection. Nothing can hinder that power. Receive peace in Christ we pray.